folks have ever been to our military academy in this country? You know, those of you that haven't, this is West Point in the background here. It's located about 50 miles up the Hudson River from New York City on the west bank of the Hudson River, hence the name West Point. Of course, it's an appropriate time of year. That's about what it looks like last week when I was down there. So as Tal says, I, I'm, a lot of, I'm a little strange, right? I'm not your typical Harvard professor. I spent 22 years in uniform, uh, retired as a colonel a couple years ago. And so what, but I am Harvard Business School trained, so I do believe in the case study method. And so all I did this morning, Tal said, come talk to us a little bit about leader development, is I brought a handful of, or a pocket full of stories, right? And I don't know how far we'll get to them, but I'll at least tell you what the stories are that I brought along. Uh, the first one is called the West Point story. Uh, that's sort of my story. That's where I grew up. My wife and I met there. We were both classmates there. Uh, our two oldest uh, sons, Sean and Kyle, are actually there right now as students. Um, this is actually a movie uh, starring James Cagney, Doris Day, back in the 1950s. And so I'll share a little bit about where I learned most about leading and what leader development's about. And that's the one story, the West Point story. Another story uh, that I'll share with you uh, is I've come across, had the privilege of coming across some great leaders in, in my life and my career. Anybody recognize this gentleman? Schwarzkopf? General Norman Schwarzkopf. He was a West Point graduate. He was the uh, commander-in-chief of CENTCOM during the first Iraq war. And he came to West Point while I was there, right at the end of the first Gulf War in 1991. And I was fortunate enough to videotape a short session of him. And it's perhaps the most concise in a video format that I've ever found definition of leading. So I'll share that one with you if you're interested. Anybody recognize him? It's Coach K, Mike Krzyzewski. He was my basketball coach when I was uh, at West Point. I, was, I actually tried out for the team. Uh, he coached an Army. I was, uh, yeah, you're laughing, I know. I was a little too short and, um, and uh, a little too slow. So I didn't make the team, but Mike and I have stayed in touch for years. I used to bring him back to West Point to talk about leadership. And I've got a video clip of him teaching a, a little bit about leadership at West Point, as well as integrate that into a story about how to develop leaders. I was actually down at Durham last week, spent the day with him and his team as they're preparing to get ready for the Final Four. And we'll share a few stories about that if we have time. And if at the end we have some time, this is a video clip that was sent to me by uh, my son at West Point that was actually sent to him by some soldiers in Iraq. Um, this summer I ended up being asked by our new ambassador, U.S. ambassador to Baghdad, if I would accompany him to uh, Iraq as he took over his new job leading the embassy in Iraq. And um, so I sh I've got some stories there. If we have time, it's a pretty inspiring way to end. So that's all I've got. I've got some stories. If it's okay with you, we'll just get started uh, where I got started, which is the West Point story. And so there I was in 1989 teaching leadership to a bunch of cadets. Somebody comes busting in my room and says, Colonel Snook, Colonel Snook, turn the TV on. We turn it on. There's CNN. The Berlin Wall's coming down. The world changed overnight. You know, if you're in the U.S. military, I mean, all of a sudden, you know, the competition, the competitive landscape changed. And we started thinking about how we currently developed leaders for the Cold War and how we'd done that for the past 50 years. And we started thinking, what will the future be like? What will the future be like? And this was 1989. And we came up with an acronym, right? In the military, we've got acronyms for everything. And the acronym we came up with for the future workplace of our graduates was VUCA, V-U-C-C-A, VUCA, right? If you come up an acronym in the military, it's got to have a guttural sound, right? Just a VUCA, right? We imagined that the future workplace of our graduates, our leaders, was going to be volatile, uncertain, chaotic, complex, and ambiguous. Volatile, uncertain, chaotic, complex, and ambiguous. So here it was in 1989. The Cold War was frightening in its own right, but relatively stable. Two nation states, you know, duking it out each other, but there were some rules. We thought at the end of the Cold War, the direction was going to go towards VUCA. Little did we know, right, 15 years later, how VUCA the world was going to get. And so we started to imagine if we're supposed to develop leaders for a VUCA future, you know, we got to start looking at ourselves in the mirror. How do we develop leaders over the last 200 years at West Point? And maybe we need to change how we do that. Now, West Point, trying to change an institution like West Point, well, we got a saying at West Point. 200 years of history, untouched 
by tradition. I don't know. Some of you say, like, like 200 years of tradition untouched by change. Or something. I mean, we're just like, a change in an institution like that is like impossible. And one of the biggest challenges you'll all face and that we change, that we face at institutions is, um, is, is, is learn, and when it comes to learning and development, is arrogance, right? I mean, in a perverse sort of way, the more successful we get, either as individuals or as, as, as leaders or as organizations, the harder it becomes to learn, right? We're more and more successful. We start reading our own press clippings. We start believing our own press clippings. We start drinking our own bath water, breathing our own exhaust fumes. I mean, you get the idea, right? So no matter how successful, the more and more successful organizations or we become, the harder it is because we become arrogant and we become inward looking and we stop listening. And so there I was at West Point, 200 years of history, untouched by progress, right? And we were trying to change the institution to develop leaders for a VUCA world. 